I want to talk about the fundamental differences between human and artificial intelligence. It's a topic that is uh, playing a lot today. Um, and of course, it's a, such a vast topic that I can only cover one key and fundamental difference, what I consider the crucial difference. See, I was told that this is the clicker, but I don't see where the clicker is. So that, there you go, oh, here. All right, so what is artificial intelligence? It is about machines that behave with intelligence, which is uh, similar to human beings. So they can do learning, reasoning, they can solve problems, and so on. And we also read that artificial intelligence based on artificial neural networks may soon surpass the human capacities. Some scientists even claim that in less than 40 years, maybe 100 years, but even if it is 100 years or 1,000 years, that sometime in the future, computers will become conscious. These claims are not vain. I mean, they're actually based on impressive results. Recently, uh, AI has been able to beat world champions in chess, in Jeopardy, and Go. Now, what is it that crucially distinguishes human intelligence from AI? What is conscious understanding? Is conscious understanding essential to intelligent behavior? Can a machine truly understand? Does understanding require consciousness? And if so, can a machine be conscious? So the key question to me is, can a machine be conscious? Because I believe that without consciousness, we cannot understand. That's a belief, however, but um, it is based on a lot of thoughts and experience. Now today, AI poses a serious challenge to our understanding of the nature of life, the nature of consciousness, and the nature of reality. And these are no longer philosophical questions. They were philosophical questions until recently, but now they must be seriously addressed by science. Are we biological computers? And by we, I mean not just we as a body, but we as conscious bodies. So let's talk about information and symbols. The concept of information has revolutionized science and also has revolutionized our lives. When scientists speak of information, they mean Shannon information. Shannon did not actually define information. It defined the quantity of information. So the quantity of information that is carried by a symbol is connected, is related to the probability that such a symbol might appear next in a string of symbols. The higher the probability, the lower is the content of information that is carried by that symbol. Shannon information is abstract information, is information without meaning, is appropriate for computers and communication systems, and it has served as well in that form. Shannon called average quantity of information carried by a string of symbol, he called it information entropy. It happens that the negative of information entropy has the same mathematical form of thermodynamic entropy, which is a fundamental function, is a fundamental concept in physics. That led physicists to successfully apply the concept of information to physical systems. And uh, information has had a major impact in the last 50 years on physics. Recently, in fact, some physicists found that you can actually derive quantum mechanics from six postulates which are entirely informational. There is no physical postulate. So in the reality that is described by quantum physics, which is essentially a reality described by abstract information, meaning cannot exist. 
It cannot exist in either physical reality, computers, or living systems. But each of us knows that meaning exists within us. And also we know that it is consciousness that gives meaning to existence, even though we cannot prove that we are conscious by any external measurement. The existence of consciousness, however, cannot be explained with abstract information, because meaningless symbols can only be converted into other meaningless symbols. That's all. Physics describes a meaningless world simply because the meaning has been defined away, not because the world is meaningless. In a world made of abstract information, consciousness cannot exist. So we now can either deny or accept the existence of consciousness. If we deny the existence of consciousness, we say that consciousness is an epiphenomenon, we say that it's not real, and that's the end of it. And many scientists say just that. But if we believe that consciousness exists, then it must be an irreducible property of physical reality ab initio, from the beginning. So in this case, physics without consciousness is incomplete. And we need a new conceptual framework about the nature of reality that starts with consciousness. So here I venture a possible model of consciousness that I've been working with. Now to account for the existence of consciousness, we must assume that the quantum fields, the quantum fields are the entities out of which everything that exists is made according to physics, to quantum physics. These quantum fields must possess both an inner and an outer reality where the two reflect each other. That's just like we have an inner world made of meaning and an outer world made of symbolic information. The words that I use are symbols to convey the meaning that I have within my inner world. So the words are symbols, my gestures, the, my body itself. If you could see my body inside, it's, it's still symbols. But the meaning is something else. That's the, the, what I call the inner world. The outer world is a world made of symbols. So I postulate that the stuff of which everything is made has to have those two properties for consciousness to exist. So in the framework that I'm developing, these entities are conscious fields. So I was talking about the matter quantum fields right now, described by quantum field theory. And this actually may be the first glimpse the scientists have of much vaster entities. What if the quantum fields of physics, the matter quantum fields of physics, are actually entities, conscious entities, that when they communicate with each other, they produce symbols like the electrons, the protons that we see, that we measure. So in this framework I'm developing, these entities are conscious fields which are endowed of a unique identity, like the identity of electrons or the identity of protons. They have free will. They have capacity for action, which means, in fact, the capacity to communicate. And they have consciousness, which is the capacity to perceive qualia and comprehend the meaning carried by qualia. So, conscious fields combine to create the hierarchical reality that we observe. The nucleons, the atoms, the molecules, the macromolecules, and so on. And in this framework, the inner reality is semantic, and the outer real reality is symbolic. But the two are actually aspects of a single indivisible reality. Therefore, the outer symbols cannot be separated from their meaning. Here is the crux. The symbols cannot be the abstract symbols that are described by Shannon information. 
because they are inseparable from their meaning. In fact, the information, for us, information without meaning is meaningless. It, does, it cannot even call it information. But for a computer, an abstract symbol is what well, science calls information. But for us, information without meaning doesn't mean anything. It's nothing. So these symbols are not the abstract symbol. And so to distinguish them, I call them living symbols. Just a name. Physics recognizes and describes only some of the outer symbolic reality of the uh, 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 conscious fields because it considers the quantum fields to be organizations of abstract quantum information, of qubits. So the quantum fields of classical of, of quantum physics, they simply talk about abstract information. They don't recognize that those are actually particular aspects of the outer reality of an entity which is conscious, has free will, has the capacity to make decisions, and so on. Notice that the, quant the quantum field theory describes uh, only fields. Particles actually do not exist as we imagine them. Within quantum field theories, which is the most uh, advanced theory in quantum physics, particles are simply quantized states of the fields, do not exist as bounded objects. There are no, they are not objects. In the proposed framework, the information forming the outer reality of the uh, uh, conscious fields is living information, not abstract information. Therefore, the quantum fields of physics do not even represent the outer aspect of the uh, conscious fields. They can only represent some aspects of the living information. So in this framework, the fields communicate a combine to co-evolve a hierarchy of selves, a hierarchy of meaning, and a hierarchy of living symbols whose physical counterparts are what we call atoms, molecules, macromolecules, and so on. So let's revisit symbols. Consider the consciousness of a stone within the proposed framework. A stone is made of a random aggregation of a variety of, a variety of crystallites with amorphous materials that are all in close proximity. Now, the inner reality of the stone is thus made of the formal sum. Formal sum is simply the sum where you don't carry out the sum. So like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 7, you don't do the sum. You actually consider 1 separate from 2, but they are all present. So it's the superposition of the consciousness of its uh, conscious fields and of organizations of conscious fields. So the stone, however, is not conscious as a stone. The stone is like a crowd of people and animals. The crowd is not, is not a conscious self, even though each entity in the crowd may be conscious of being part of the crowd. There is no stone self with a unique identity, with a free will, and the conscious perspective of, of a unified self that can direct its actions. There is a stone ensemble, it's not a stone self. The stone ensemble consists of the formal sum of the inner and outer realities of the many selves that form the ensemble. So the formal sum of the symbols of this ensemble form a living, I call a living incoherent symbol, because it's basically each portion is part of the sum, is a living coherent symbol, but controlled by individual and separate selves. So it is not a coherent symbol. If we look at the consciousness of a living organism, by contrast, the outer reality of a living cell consists of a living coherent symbol because the various organelles that make up the cell are integrated, not just the sum, they are integrated to form a cell self that directs the action of the cell as a unified, coherent entity. The inner consciousness of a cell is the integration, not the formal sum, of the consciousness of the, of the organelle. And the organelles, in turn, integrate the consciousness of the micromolecules they make them up, and so on and so forth, until we get down to the conscious fields that are the foundation of all physical reality, and also of all conscious reality. Ultimately, 
The consciousness and the free will of the self-self arise from the consciousness and the free will of the elementary conscious field. A cell is a quantum of life, indivisible from the conscious field from which it emerges. So likewise, the body of the cell, its outer aspect, is a living coherent symbol reflecting the integration of its component, which are also coherent symbols, sub-symbols, into a higher order living symbol. A living organism is a self, is a hierarchical organization of conscious fields that maintains semantic and symbolic continuity with them. So we can now address, finally, the question of can a digital computer become conscious based on this background. Now, a Boolean bit is an abstract symbol. It is a human convention that is respected in all electronic circuits. It is like saying that if the number of electrons over the average that are present in a node of a circuit is over a thousand, say, then the state of that node is one, is the Boolean one. If there are less than 100, the state of the node is zero. The bit is the simplest abstract symbol, the smallest quantum of information. It is meaningless per se, though it can be interpreted by a conscious self who understands the context in which that bit exists. The bit is not a living symbol that expresses the inner meaning of a self. A living, coherent symbol is open and dynamic, indivisible from its meaning. It is unbounded, breathing, just like a cell breathes, like we do breathe as a symbol, our body is a symbol, just like the entire body of a living cell is. The matter of which a computer is made consists of living, incoherent symbols, like in the stone example, that are forced to carry abstract symbols defined by human convention. Any organization of abstract symbols cannot become conscious because those symbols are not the direct expression of the inner reality and the free will of a conscious self. So even though robo and computers are made of matter that is conscious per se, they cannot become conscious selves, no matter how complex, because they are not coherent organizations of conscious fields. Just like abstract information may imitate living information, computers may imitate conscious comprehension and conscious perception, even though they cannot be conscious. When physicists insist that meaning cannot exist at the level of the quantum fields, they reduce physical reality to pure mathematics, i.e. abstract symbols organized by rules imposed by them. Those are the laws of physics. By doing so, they denature reality by throwing away the part that gives freedom and meaning to existence. They describe a virtual reality where consciousness cannot exist. At the root of the problem is the physicalist worldview of reality that promotes material rather than spiritual growth, competition, greed, and divisiveness. The mystery of being human is deeply connected with the mystery of life, the mystery of consciousness, the mysteries of free will, of which we will hear later, and the mystery of existence. Thank you very much.